This is our welcome science students. This is part two of weather mapping. In this one, we're going to be uh, mapping out the isotherms and the highs and the lows and the cold air masses and the warm air masses and the fronts. And we'll talk a little bit about how this all works out and how it helps us to understand the weather. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the isotherms for 40, 50, 60, and 70 degrees. Now, I start with uh, 50s and I come back to the 40s. The 40s are the probably the, one of the hardest parts to find here because it's kind of out of our range. But we have to make some imaginary uh, assumptions here. And so we have to look at the temperatures that are there and figure out where we would find 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and so on. So we're going to do 50s first. We've got a 46 degree temperature here and a 59. 46 is 6 away from uh, 50. 59 is 9 away. So we're going to put a little tick mark between those two at about where we think that 50 would be. And that's where I'm going to say. Now if we come back around here, we find again 46, 59, uh, 46 is 4 away, 59 is 9 away, so it's closer to the 46. We're going to put another tick mark there. Here we have a 43 and a 59. 43 is 7 away, 59 is 9 away from 50, so we're going to go kind of in the center, but a little bit closer to the 43. Now, here we have a 44 and a 59. 44 is 6 away, 59 is 9 away. So, or here's the center. We're going to go a little bit closer to the 44 because it's only 6 away. Here we have a 41 and a 56. 41 is 9 away from 50. 56 is 6 away from 50. So if here's the center, we're going to go a little bit closer to 56. Here we have a 49 and a 56. 56 is 6 away. 49 is 1 away. We're going closer to the 49. Right here. Now, that's all of the data we have between the 50s and the 60s, so or 50s and the, uh, 40s and the 50s. So we're going to start with the, or start from here. If we come out from this uh, tick mark, we're looking at about right here. We're going to come up. We're going to connect these tick marks around, and they are going to show us our isotherm of 50, and that's going to go back out this way. We're going to label it on both sides, 50 degrees and 50 degrees. Now we're going to do 60. Okay, we've got a 59 on this side and a 74. 59 is 1 away. 74 is 14 away. We're going closer to the 59. Okay, again, 59 and 73. 59 is 1 away. 73 is 13 away. We're going closer to the 59. Here we have a 56 and a 71. 71 is 11 away. 56 is 4 away. We're going to go closer to 56, but not as close as we were last time. Here we have a 61, and this is a 50. So 61 is 1 away from 60. 50 is 10 away, so we're going closer to 61. And again, we're going to connect those tick marks bend it around to the other ones that we have and follow it back out and put our 60 degrees and our 60 degrees okay now we got to do our 70s remember this line all the way across to 60 so let's take a look we have a 60 line here and a 74 60 line is 10 away 74 is 4 away here's the center we're going to close go closer to the 74 uh, about right here. 73 and 60, again, this is when this is going to curve around here like this. Seven, 60 and 71. 71 is closer, one away, so we're going to go pretty close to that. And again, we have a 61 here, which is nine away from 70, a 71, which is one away, so we're going to curve it around. We're going to we're going to uh, connect our dots or our tick marks. We're going to move it around, and now we have 70. That's our 70 degree isotherm. Now, isotherm, just so, just out a little, you know, I forgot to tell you this. An isotherm means air, a line of equal temperature. So that's what we're drawing, lines of equal temperature. 
The last one we have to draw is our isotherm of 40. Okay, so basically this one's going to be a little tougher. Here we have a 50, a 46, and then here on this side, we don't know where 40 is, so we're going to draw it in the best we can. So we're going we're gonna to come around here. That's about 30, uh, 43. So that's about 3 away from 40. That's about 4 away from 40. That's about 6 away from 40. So we're going to come out here. 41 is 1 away from 40. 49, again, is 9 away from 40. So it's going to come out here, about here. We're going to connect these dots the best we can. Not all, I'm not perfect. So, and we're going to connect these like this. And we have 40 degrees. Now, this would have been easier to do if we had more um, weather reading. So, if the more we can fill in our weather map, the more information we get, which makes it a little easier. But we've drawn the isotherm, so that's done. Now, it tells us to put an L in the area of lowest pressure and an H in the area of highest pressure. Our lowest pressure is 29.3 or 29 or 3. That is in Dodge City, Kansas. So it's right here, this area here. Our next lowest would be 29 or 7, or 29 or 6. 29 or 6, which is in North Platte, Nebraska. So we've got 29 or 3 and 29 or 6. These are our two lowest areas of high, uh, pressure. So we're going to put a little oval around that area. That is our low pressure area. That's how your weatherman gets that. We're going to put a nice big thick L in that area. Now we want to find the area of highest pressure. Our two highest pressure areas is in Birmingham, Alabama with 30.1 and Lexington, Kentucky with 30.1. So that's over here, guys. And we're going to put an oval of around those two areas. And that's going to be our high area. So we're going to put a nice, big, thick H here for high. So we got high and low. And we're done with that. Now, it says outline in red the area of the warm air mass. Well, let's take a look at the areas of the air masses here. We've got the warm air mass. This is 70, 70, it's hard to see, 70, 74, 73, and 71. So 71, 73, 74. Pretty warm air compared to everything else. That's our warmest air. But if you look, we have arrows showing what direction it is. So our warm air mass is going this direction. So we're just going to put a big arrow here for our warm air mass. And we're just going to kind of color shade in that arrow because that's our warm air mass. And it says put that in red, and we just did. Now, our next one we're going to do is we're going to do our cold air masses, where our cold ones are our 40s. And we have a 41 here, and we have a 43, and if we have a 46, we have a 41. But if you can tell as we're coming through, the arrows are going this way. They're pointing this way, and they're curving around. They're coming around this way. So right here, we are going to put, we're going to start our arrow because that's the cold, that's where the cold turns into the warmer. We got 46, and it jumps all the way up to 59 here. So we're going to put our beginning of our arrow here, and we're going to curve that arrow round to here. And we're going to fill in that and shade that in with blue, because that's when our coldest air is coming, and it's curving around that low. Remember, if you look down here, well, you can't see at the bottom, you see your pressure areas, uh, the air goes around in a counterclockwise way around a low and right now that's that's exactly right it's cur curving around that low in a nice counterclockwise way and we're done with that we've got our rare our area of red a warm air mass we have our area of blue cold air mass the last thing we have to do is we have to talk about uh, where is it the warm air mass running into the cold air mass this is your warm front now if you can see, we've got 71 degrees. It's running into the 60 degrees weathers. So where is it running into the cold? Well, this is a cold here. It's coming up. It's going this way, and it's running into this cold area up here. Right off the bottom of this low, we're going to put a little 
uh, front here. This is a front line, and we're going to put like little half suns, and that's our symbol for a warm air mass. Okay. And then, where does, uh, where does our cold air mass run into our hot? Well, it's coming around here, and it's running in right here. This is going to be a cold front. Okay, we're going to put a line here where, it's, where this arrow is running into the uh, warmer air. And we're going to put little blue triangles representing icicles. That's our cold front. Okay, now, what does this all mean? Well, we know what happens along a cold front and a warm front. Around a cold front, you're going to have um, very intense storms and rain. It's pushing uh, it, its way through. It's pushing the air up quickly. It's cooling the air down quickly, and that's causing a lot of condensation. You've got heavy rains, intense storms. So what you need to be looking for for your forecast and what you need to write of, where, is, where are you going to see the heavy storms in the future? you're going to see them along in front of your cold front. So that's where you need to identify. And along a warm front, you are going to have uh, slow rain sometimes. You're going to have some cloudy skies, but they're going to clear up, and then behind it, you're going to have warm air coming in. Where are you going to see that happening over the next few days? Also, Look at the highs and lows. You know that in low areas, low pressure areas, you have bad weather generally. Uh, that kind of is a low pressure area pulling all the bad weather into it. Uh, around high pressure areas, you have better weather coming up. And so where are those things happening? So that's where when you write your uh, summary of what your weather forecast for the near future is, think about your warm fronts. Think about your cold fronts. Think about what weather's going there. Think about where the cold fronts are going to be moving to and the warm fronts are going to be moving to. Think about your low uh, pressure areas and your high pressure areas. Think about where you, you know things are going to start cooling down and where they're going to start heating up. Those are the things you need to look at for your uh, weather forecast. Okay, great. Uh, make sure to get this in your science notebook and good luck with your weather forecast. Thank you. This is this is the end of part two.